It's 32 degrees now, and it's pretty hot. But 32 degrees can actually be freezing if we are talking about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Difference in unit makes a huge difference. The situation is bad indeed when people from all around the world use different units in their daily life. Let me give you an example. In Malaysia, we use kg to measure weight. But in other countries, for example, USA, they use pounds. For instance, I'm 70 kg, which makes me normal weight for my height. But if you tell your friend in America, hey, that guy's weight 70, they will exclaim and say, 70 pounds, is it a hobbit? That is why in the late 18th century, scientists from France saw the importance for everyone in the scientific field to use the same unit of measurements. It makes everyone use meter for length and kg for weight. This sparks a movement that eventually leads to the development of international system of units, aka SI units. Here's the list of SI units. Not using SI units, Yao Ming is standing 7 foot 6, weighing 311 pounds. But if you want to use Yao Ming as a physics test subject, you need to use SI unit. Hence, when documenting Yao Ming as a test subject, we need to use meter and kg. Yao Ming is 2.29 meter tall and weights 141 kg now. It's the same, just different units. So what is the takeaway message? Use the SI unit in all your science writings and know some examples of non-SI unit should your teacher ask you to list them down in exams. So one day, a base unit is walking down the street and he saw another base unit. He told her, I love you, let's multiply and boom, meter square is born. So derived quantity is when one or more unit combines and becomes something different. Meter measures length and when meter and meter combines, it becomes the unit meter square that measures area. And combined with yet another meter, meter square becomes cubic meters, which now is the unit for volume. Now this example is simple and already known by you, but how about this? Speed is how far you go in a second. So obviously, meter divided by second, you get speed. Now when I was a student, I always analyzed the base unit of the derived unit that I am calculating to get an idea of how to calculate it. For example, if I have forgotten how to calculate speed, I will look at the base unit that makes up speed. Meter per second, and I read meter divided by seconds, and boom, that's your answer. Another example that I can think of is Newton, the unit for measuring force, has the unit of kilogram meter per second square. If you look closely, you will find that the meter per second square is actually the unit of acceleration. Hence, kilogram meter per second square means mass multiplied by acceleration. I repeat, force equals to mass times acceleration. F equals to ma in short. There, by looking closely at the base unit of Newton's, you have learned about Newton's second law of motion, which will be taught in chapter 2. However, if you want to break down newtons into base units, you get kilogram, meters, and seconds. Another derived quantity is density. You may have learned from chemistry that density means how heavy an object is per cubic meter. Hence, the unit of density is kilogram per cubic meter. You know, just the other day, I bought a SIM card adapter which allows me to put a nano SIM card into a micro SIM adapter and then into the normal SIM card adapter. Young people nowadays really have it easy to remember all the scientific unit prefix. Terabytes, gigabytes, megabytes, kilobytes. Decimal, centimeter, millimeter, microchip, nanochip. There, you already know almost all of the unit prefixes from your daily lives. Now let's try to remember about Deca, Hecta, and Pico, okay? One of my favorite professors once said, humans are all lazy. It's called conserving energy for survival. So scientists created special symbols of sign to represent the prefix so that they can write less letters. 
and by special symbol and signs, I mean the first letter of all the prefix, except my crow, which have a special sign, looks like an U. One thing to look out when writing this prefix symbol is, some of them is in uppercase, like in case of Megas M, Gigas G, and Teras T. And others is in lowercase, like Kilos K and blah 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 blah, look at the table. It's quite particular, don't mess it up. And don't go crazy and draw all the zeros when you are writing super huge or super small numbers. I'm sure the only time that your teacher feels happy counting all the zeros is when someone handed them a check full of them. Instead, use scientific notation. Count the number of zeros yourself and write properly on the top right corner of the ten. And when it's below decimal point, count how many places it is below decimal point and write the numbers in negative on the top right corner. Just like what your math teacher taught you. If nobody taught you, you are smart, just look at the table and figure it out yourself.